so dear students uh, i am going to discuss a very interesting poem by philip larkin entitled toads now uh, when you just i mean uh, hear this word toads this is the name of the poem now when you just listen to this word you know toad it conjures up a uh, images of a grotesque little amphibian and this little amphibian uh is the base of this poem toads as you know that a toad is as i had just told you a small amphibian species with a very uh, ugly look it hibernates for long months and is known to be not particularly agile very inactive very dull in this poem toads has been used in metaphorical sense the poet describes two toads one is the exterior influence that society has on an individual to work and the other is the interior or personal prompting to work so when you read this poem you will find out how two toads are there exterior influence of the society to work and also the interior which the inner prompting in this poem the speaker the poet himself lets out a cry of frustration against his job that you know sits upon him like a, a slimy frustrating suffocating toad the speaker dreams of being free of it but he recognizes that something toad like in himself that makes him cling to his security even in his frustration in day to day life we find out how we have two kinds of people actually one who take a lot of interest in their job in their work while others are the shirkers bane raho pagla kaam karega agla is a concept actually which is you know very popular among you know the people now the word toads has been used as i have told you as a metaphor to describe the innate tendency among humans to be shirkers dull lazy indolent and parasitical and i think every day you have this kind of you know uh, approach whether to enjoy the life or whether to you know uh, do the work this poem was composed in the year 1953 and published in the collection of poem called the less deceived in 1955 and as i have just told you that this is this describes about the relationship between the working man and his job a uh, working man and job this is there in this poem uh from the poet's perspective a job is you know uh, something one must do 6 days a week 
and you know after doing 6 days a week a person gets you know pressurized gets tired and that is why in the poem he asked the question for what price we are doing the work for 6 days uh if you just you know look at uh, the poems of uh, philip larkin then you'll find out that you know uh, drudgery of the work uh it's it's a common theme among larkin's work especially in his two poems which are very harp serious in tone one is toads which i am going to explain and one is toads revisited uh uh when you read this poem toads you'll find out very interesting line in the beginning the why should i let the toad work is quiet on my life and can't i use my wit as a wit pitch fork and drive the brute off the, this is the speaker of the poem toads as a younger poet uh larkin told an interviewer for the uh, guardian and he said i would like to quote his lines i read these lines uh in a, in a, in a critical book the lines are that you know uh, work encroaches like a weed over the whole of my life these are the words of larkin himself work encroaches like a weed over the whole of my life it's all the time absorbing creative energy that might have gone into poetry these are the lines but an older larkin learned to balance work with his creative vocation that is poetry now uh, larkin is always considered as a traditional poet uh, and master in his craft in this poem he combines formal poetic structure with colloquial language now this is something which is very significant language in the poem is very colloquial uh he has borrowed some devices from william butler eats and thomas hardy and you know uh, in uh, this poem we have nine quatrains that is stands of four lines we have nine quatrains in this poem and throughout the poem you'll find out his humorous and pessimistic voice the stanzas themselves are built on ab ab rhyme pattern and when i say uh, ab ab uh, you know the meaning this this is actually the pattern ab ab first line rhyming with third and second line rhyming with fourth now this kind of uh, this is traditionally known as hymnal measure this kind of pattern but what you should also remember that larkin bends his own rules with the use of slant rhymes I, you know i'm telling you all these words because most of the time we'll find out that such questions are asked in ugc net examinations also so uh, slant rhymes or words which may have matching consonant or vowel sounds but not both when you read the poem you'll find out that an example of this is there the first stanza where life and off 
they are you know uh, shown as the matching words or in the third line lispers third stanza lispers and poppers are said to be uh, rhyming words this use of you know half or you know slant rhyme it was made famous by a famous uh, american poet emily dickinson who is famous for his theme of death now when you read this poem you'll find out two very important themes one is search for self and the other is duty and responsibility these are the two famous you know themes coming to uh, the poem the first stanza and uh, you'll find out that you know uh, uh, the the that the poem's main image provides an objective you know correlative for you know oppressive daily work and as i told you in the beginning the toad is not a physical animal it is used as a metaphor to represent the pressures you know of the world look at the first stanza why should i let the toad work squat on my life rhetorical question is there now uh, the author is a clearly an over you know worked person and who finds that my life is you know robbed of all good things because of you know heavy pressure of work burden so why should i let the to the work squat on my life toad work means the you know hard demands of a regular job and they're compared with you know ugly toad toad as i told you here is a symbol of boring work that the poet wants to give up squat means to you know, uh, to sit tight and control the freedom of life so why should i let the toad work squat on my life can't i use my wit as a pitchfork pitchfork is a is a is a form tool uh like a fork to you know lift dry grass it's a beautiful use of uh, you know simile simile can't i use my wit as a pitchfork to drive the brute off brute here is the ugly toad this shows you know the poet's hatred for you know hard work can't i use my you know wit as a pitchfork and throw it away throw it away now in the next stanza uh is a six days of the week it swells with the sickening poison just for paying a few bills that out of proportion now six days of the work he says throughout the week you know i am under the pressure and burden of a very hard work and here sickening poison the boredom of hard work is compared to the poison of uh, you know the toads why am i doing uh, the hard work for 6 days just for paying few bills he says i am doing the hard work for 6 days in order to earn uh, you know some uh, amount of money to pay the bills to pay to meet the bare expenses of living 
and he says that you know uh, it's 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 a bad bargain because i am losing uh, out too much to gain too little that is out of proportion i am spending the, the the time the energy for 6 days and just to pay the few bills how much amount of energy and work i am spending for 6 days and uh, it is only for paying few bills i uh, don't like this as you know that if you read the biography of uh, philip larkin then you'll find out that he was doing the job of a librarian and that is you know uh, that was quite you know uh, monotonous for for him coming to next stanza lots of folk live on their wits you must have seen in day to day life there are two kinds of people one who are very serious and sincere towards duties and others are shirkers so uh, those who are very sincere and serious towards their duties they sometimes think that why are we spending too much energy on the work others are not doing and we are getting the same salary so you know a kind of two toads one of you know uh, uh, enjoying the life without doing anything and that to do the work i think he is trying to explain these uh, these points he says that lots of folk live on their wits uh you'll find out a very comic tone here in these lines and uh, beautiful example of alliteration here lots of folk live on their wits the poet argues that there are so many people who are using their wits and living say uh, lecturers men of letters i mean they earn their living through lectures and talk shows then lispers uh uh lispers means speakers who use language by you know lisping like children so that it may please others sometimes you know uh, people like lisping so those who make talk shows or those who lisp uh this is actually losel and losels losels are you know uh, you know worthless people you can say worthless people lob lollyman loud soul these are archaic archaic words slang actually slang slang words uh they do not end as poppers a uh, popper here means poor people all these people they are not doing a lot of work i am doing 6 days work i am doing hard work but these people are not doing the work even then they are living they are surviving they do not end as poppers lots of people live up lanes uh with fires in a bucket there are so many people poor and the destitute living on you know roads and they are having fires in a bucket they are moving from one place to the other in order to fight of the cold they uh, uh, sometimes eat windfalls sometimes tinned sardines uh using you know eating uh, very uh, uh common you know items so uh, the windfalls means things which come to a person as you know uh, matter of you know luck you you get it and you know yeah, then you eat it uh 
Do they like all these things? The nippers, children, have got bare feet. The unspeakable wives are as skinny as, you know, whippets. Their nippers have got bare feet. The children are too poor to buy, you know, uh, shoes. They cannot afford shoes. Their unspeakable wives are as skinny as whippets. Whippets. You know, this is a British dog breed of medium size. They seem to be very, you know, lean and thin. Gain, simly. Their wives are uh, very, you know, lean and thin. No one actually is starved. Do they starve? I think they are not starving. They are also living. They are also surviving. And look at me. I am doing hard work for six days. Then we are coming to the main point. Why do a people, you know, work? Generally in government jobs, here in India also you will find out that how people just wait for their pensions and all that. Because it is something which is their future security. So the, ah, were I courageous enough to shout, stuff your pension. Uh, do I have that much courage to say to my boss that it's tough with your pension? Can I say it to my boss? Do I have that much courage? Because I think we are doing the job only for uh, this point, for future security. So do I have that much courage to say to my boss, stuff your, uh, your pension? But I know all too well that the stuff that dreams are made on. But we know that everything is based on that pension. A man builds his hopes on and dreams on his pension. Uh, I think when you read these lines, you are reminded of the lines from uh, a famous play by... Shakespeare we are such a stuff as dreams are made on and our little life is rounded with a sleep so were I courageous the, the poet wishes that he could be able to live without the pension and say to my boss that I am rejecting your pension you know just keep your pension with you but I think I I, I cannot say. We cannot say it because we have no other option. This is actually something, uh, you know, which uh, is uh, meant for the security for future. You'll find out here how the tone of the poem changes. For something sufficiently uh, toad-like quits in me too its hunkers are as heavy as hard lug and cold as snow uh, the author you know says the speaker says the things are not that easy or simple just as that, you know, irksome, disturbing toad. There is another toad inside me that is also quite, you know, demanding and uh, for unforgiving. It does not want to give anything free. Its hunkers are heavy, hard luck and cold as snow. So, he is coming to uh, another, you know, toad. Uh, you. 
and will never allow me to blarney my way of getting the fame and the girl and the money all at one sitting blarney the blarney means talk which uh, aims to charm uh, or flatter or persuade the people it will never allow me to blarney my way of getting the fame the girl and the money all at one sitting the second toad is quite hard nosed it does not allow any kind of revery where the comforts of life come on their own without toil if one wants to marry a beautiful girl or live a comfortable life one has to work hard for it so another toad the second toad will never allow me to blarney my way of getting the fame and the girl and the money all at one sitting it does not allow any kind of revery where comforts of life come on their own without toil without hard work without labor you have to hard work you have to work hard to achieve that now the speaker says i do not say one body is the other uh one spiritual truth but i do say it's hard to lose either when you have both now the speaker say that these two toads which i have described are quite separate from each other but uh they must coexist in an individual to make up his bitter sweet life one body is the other i do say it's hard to lose either when you have both in other words human life must have a component of luxury and comfort and a component of slog and sweat if you want to lead a luxurious life you have to work for it and you know uh, as you have seen in in most of the cases that if a child is begging some amount of money from you at the cost of the item which he is selling sometimes you give the amount without taking that item from him he refuses that to buy first buy uh, this balloon then i'll take this uh, 10 rupees or so and there are some people who take it you know uh, you 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 give them because they are just begging for it so if you want to do a, a luxurious life then you know uh, okay th- that's fine but do the work then uh, lead that life so beautifully the poet has you know described the two kinds of you know toads uh, uh, in in this poem and as i told you that you know uh, this poem has some you know autobiographical touches also because he was doing uh, the job of a librarian that he is you know describing here uh, uh, as i told in the beginning also that uh, he is trying to explain his attitude towards his salaried job of uh, a, a librarian and uh, we have humorous uh, and half serious tone throughout the poem thank you very much